Hi there, this is Janet Simmons and welcome to video 11.2 where we will examine employee and organization mindset. We will begin with a few analysis questions before examining the learning mindset of organizations and employees. Next, we'll look at the global learning capacity and then we'll wrap up with the synthesis questions. There are three analysis questions for this video. How does your attitude or mindset affect how you approach learning in the workplace? Do you and your organization have a compatible learning mindset? And finally, how does your organization's mindset affect your learning mindset? We'll discuss each of these in the upcoming tutorial. Let's begin by gaining a mutual understanding of the term mindset. Professor Carol Dweck of Stanford University introduced the terms fixed mindset and growth mindset in her book, Mindset, The New Psychology at Success, which was published in the year 2000. She says that mindsets are how we perceive our abilities, and this greatly affects our motivation and achievement. Dweck says that learners with a fixed mindset believe their intelligence, talents, and abilities are fixed traits. Alternatively, learners with a growth mindset believe that intelligence, talents, and abilities are not fixed, and that trying new learning strategies and learning to improve is the key to success and growth. In 2015, Keith Hagart said the crucial point for individuals is that these mindsets have a large impact upon our understanding of success and failure. Fixed mindset people dread failure, feeling that it reflects badly upon themselves as individuals, while people with a growth mindset embrace failure as an opportunity to learn and improve their abilities. The growth mindset is associated with a can-do attitude, effect, and positive thoughts. On the other hand, a fixed mindset is associated with a lack of effort, frustration, and negative thoughts. This graphic provides an excellent depiction of the two mindsets. But remember that mindset can change and that the vast majority of people have a mixture of fixed and growth mindsets. People are not one or the other. Our challenge as educators is to help achieve the growth mindset of learners when in training and learning environments. Professor Dweck cautions us that the growth mindset is not just about effort, but instead is about having a repertoire of approaches to learning and improvement. Finally, it's important to know the triggers of a fixed mindset so that we can help ourselves and learners work with the triggers and work through them. This graphic depicts who in America uses the internet to learn new things. You'll note that they tend to be less than 50 years old, have a good education, and make good money. You could say that these people have a learning mindset. They want to learn and are motivated to learn. Some of these people are intrinsically motivated. In other words, they are driven to learn through self-motivation as opposed to having external forces pushing them to learn. This is a learning mindset. When we apply this to workplace learning, we could say there are two learning mindsets. One is the employee learning mindset and the other is the organizational learning mindset. You are already familiar with Jane Hart and Harold Jarkey from our support videos and readings, but these two workplace learning experts are seeing a shift in the learning mindset. This mindset is changing for both employees and organizations. Let's take a look at an organizational mindset and then the workplace learner's mindset. As we can see here, the organizational mindset has shifted. It has moved from teaching to modeling and from telling employees what to learn and how to learn to seeing employees learning as skills building and help both the organization and the employees. According to Jane Hart, employees today take responsibility for their own learning, plus are supported by organizational support systems and training opportunities. Individuals are motivated to learn and seek out external resources such as MOOCs and other work-related information. Organizations who encourage and support this type of employee learning will reap the rewards, but organizations are not responding quickly enough. Employees are ready and believe learning is important. It's also called a capacity gap when readiness and importance is not equal. This map illustrates a global pattern for the capacity gap. Canada's minus 28 means that there is a shortfall in capacity. While the situation is slightly worse in the U.S., many European countries are faring better than Canada. According to a 2015 study by Deloitte, 
More than 8 out of 10 or 85% of respondents cited learning as important or very important. That's up 21% from last year. Yet, in a troubling development, more employees than ever report that they're unprepared to meet this challenge. This capacity gap between the importance and the issue and the ability to respond grew in magnitude by an enormous 211% over the last 12 months. According to Deloitte, the capacity gap increased from 2014 to 2015. Additionally, none of the countries on the map indicated equal or positive values, with France at minus 17 having the smallest capacity gap. The report goes on to say that employees are demanding a personalized digital learning experience, but most organizations are not prepared for this. Less than a quarter of the organizations polled say they feel comfortable in today's digital learning environment, with only a marginal number of organizations feeling comfortable using videos, audios, or simulations, providing mobile learning, or using MOOCs in their program. As we can see, there is a disparity between the learning mindset, the optimum organizational learning mindset, and the current state of organizational learning readiness. This gives us a glimpse into the near future where organizations will have to evolve their mindset to meet the needs of their employees and the workplace. In the upcoming tutorial, we will talk more about the learning mindset and some of the possible outcomes of these pressing problems. The learning mindset is something that many employees and organizations overlook. Self-reflection is just a first step to identifying the strengths and weaknesses of the mindset. Moving employees and organizations to change these mindsets is where the challenge truly begins. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the tutorial.